Hello friends, happy Friday. So we've got the uh, Drew Estate Shade Connecticut again. <clears throat> but before I get started on that, I wanted to share this with you. So this was, I um, actually went out to lunch today and had a quick cigar. This was a little, what is it, Corona, Petit Corona? I don't know, thought you big. Um, and this is an Arturo Fuente Special Selection and that's all that it says on it. Um, this little fella was $2.50, and it was actually quite good. I was really impressed by this. I just wanted a quick smoke because I didn't have a lot of time. I had to go back to work. Um, but our, the Arturo Fuente Special Selection for $2.50, it fit the bill perfectly, lasted about 20 minutes. Uh, I could have smoked it for another 10 or so. And uh, yeah, I was I was quite impressed with it. We've talked about the Drew Estates uh, shade before, so I won't bore you with that. Other than to say it's a very good cigar. So we are actually in a different location than usual, although you don't know that because you can't see where I am. And the reason you can't see where I am is I forgot to bring my stupid other camera again. So that means you're going to be stuck looking at me for the next 10 or 15 minutes. But at least there'll be a cigar in the shot, so. All right, let's go home. Oh, it has been a week, I tell you. It's, it's one of those, thank God it's Friday kind of weeks. Of course, the truth is they're all like that. <laughs> It rained up until, I mean, it's still raining last night, actually. It's going to start building an arc if it didn't let up. And, um, it even rained this afternoon a bit. I'm in a parking lot that's fairly busy this time of day. There's a little uh, tavern restaurant type place here where a lot of folks go after work on Fridays. So I need to navigate the traffic carefully. Yeah, so in addition to the rain, I've got a, a big deadline at the end of this month um, where I'm bringing a project to a very important milestone. So I've been working really hard to get all the information in, make sure that everything is done right and, you know, keep everything on track. So that's been a lot of work, um, but I enjoy what I do, so... And these things tend to sort of wax and wane. Uh, the other reason it was a uh, less than less than wonderful week is that I um, was actually sick for part of it. So this is going to border on uh, too much information, but uh, it's worth it, I think, for the the underlying story. So, I went to the doctor, so because of my medical history, my immune system's pretty beat up, and I pretty easily get infections and things like that, so I have to be careful. And uh, two weeks ago or so, I went to the doctor with an infection, and uh, he said, yep, that's an infection, we'll give you antibiotic, and I, this happens to me occasionally, so I go get the antibiotic, prescription filled and you know, usually it's seven to ten days of antibiotic. This was one that I had never taken before and the prescription was for three days. And I thought, huh, I guess this is a more potent, faster acting, whatever, and you know, I took it and you know the way antibiotics work is you pretty much start feeling better, you know, within twelve hours. By the end of three days, I was feeling perfectly fine, so I figured it worked. So two weeks go by, and the symptoms come back. So I go back to the same doctor. That's you know, coming back. 
and he says to me, yes it is, and it's my fault. Not my fault, his fault. I said, how can it be your fault? Well, I was supposed to subscribe, uh, prescribe a seven-day course, and I only prescribed a three-day course, and I'm sorry about that. And then he went on to explain why. And this is the part that nearly put me through the roof. Um, the reason was that they do all the prescriptions now by computer, and the computer system auto-fills in the, the various um, fields. Like, you know, it, it knows that I'm the patient, so it puts my information in, and it knows what drugstore I use, so it puts that information in, and then he chooses the, the drug, and it knows what the diagnosis is, so it chooses the dose, and he didn't check it, and it defaulted to a shorter course than what I needed, and so that's what happened. It was the computer's fault. I mean, it technically was the doctor's fault for not checking the computer, but, you know, technology does not always help us. It's really the bottom line. Now, I was initially a little bit upset with the guy, but thinking about it, the doctor could have come in and said, hey, it's coming back. I guess three days wasn't enough. Let's give you seven days and see what happens. And I would have been none the wiser. I would have just said thank you and left. And, you know, so he actually admitted to making a mistake. And, you know, a physician doing that is, is walking a very dangerous line. But I was glad that he did. I mean, it, it really restored my faith a bit to, to hear someone in his position admit to making a mistake. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that he was honest with me. And, you know, it, there was no harm done in the end. Uh, so, so that's great. I'm, I'm okay. But then I went to another doctor, and, and I, I've got... <laughs> I'm old and falling apart, so I've got a lot of doctors uh, now this doctor is my primary care doctor. The other one was not. And I go to him for completely unrelated reasons. Um, just, just a checkup sort of thing. And I go in and, uh, you know, normally you, you sit in the waiting room and then they call you back and you sit in a little exam room and normally someone comes back. I don't know what that person is called. Uh, that's probably not a nurse practitioner, but it's someone, a nurse of some sort, that uh, takes your vital signs, you know, measures your blood pressure, your temperature, your weight, uh, height, all that kind of stuff, and notes them, and then asks you, if, you know, what's going on. Well, they call me back from the waiting room, and they escort me to a corner of the hallway and ask me to sit down. There's a chair there. Okay, I'll sit in the hallway, I guess. They then wheel up to me what I can only describe as an IV stand. I don't know if you've ever seen an IV stand. Um, it's a pole on, on a little tripod sort of thing with wheels on it. And on the top of this stand is mounted an iPad. And the woman wheels it over and says to me, this is our virtual scribe. She will be taking your vitals. And she then walks away, and this iPad starts talking to me. Now, it wasn't a program. It was actually a woman on the phone. Um, I couldn't see her, but she could see me. And the first thing she did was ask me if I was comfortable talking in the place that I was, because I wasn't in a room. I was actually sitting out in the hallway. Um, I didn't have anything incredibly personal to talk about, so it wasn't a problem. And, you know, she went on to interview me, basically. And... It would have been okay, except she started asking me questions like, how much do you weigh? And I, I don't know how much I weigh. I, I don't weigh myself very often. I, I have no idea. Well, can you guess? Sure, I guessed. They never weighed me. When I did finally see the doctor, nobody took my temperature, nobody weighed me, nobody took any vitals. Eventually, because we were talking about blood pressure medicine, the doctor decided to take my blood pressure, so at least that was measured. But I don't know about this. You know, it's... Why, why couldn't I just talk to a person? Now, the doctor explained to me 
<clears throat> that this is great technology because it's allowing people that are disabled to do a job that they, you know, love doing. And I thought, well, that's a good thing. You know, if somebody's really disabled, they're homebound, but they're actually trained as a nurse, and they can do this kind of work remotely, that, that's really good, because I'm sure there's a lot of places where they have trouble finding qualified people to do that kind of work. But it just felt like I wasn't getting a proper examination. They shouldn't be relying on me to tell them what my vitals are. So, I don't know, I, I seem to complain a lot about technology and technology versus tradition and I, I don't mean to, I mean I joke and say that I am a Luddite, I, I'm not, I mean if my job, my, my real job, my day job, uh, is very technical and, <clears throat> you know, I take full advantage of computers and actually do a lot of programming myself and, you know, I'm not at all a Luddite in reality. But when it comes to things like that, I just, you know, I just want to talk to a person. And I was talking to a person, but I want the person to be sitting in front of me. But I guess I'm, I'm a dinosaur in that regard. I mean, certainly, I can't even, like, go into a, I don't know if everybody out there knows what Panera Bread is, but... Panera Bread is this... Oh, yeah, they've got national commercials. I'm sure you know what Panera is. is. Um, and you go in there and, and you, you know, used to walk up to a counter and say, like, a large coffee and a bagel, and they'd get it for you. Now I have to go to a little kiosk and work with a touch screen, and I don't like it. The, the person that I was talking to is standing right there, and I'm not allowed to talk to them. So, anyway guys, I probably have ranted enough for, for one Friday. I hope you enjoyed it a bit and uh, wasn't too boring or too repetitive for you. So I'm going to go and continue to enjoy this shade. Um, again, the Arturo Fuente Special Selection. Highly recommend it. For $2.50, assuming that's the price everywhere. It's hard to go wrong. And it was it was a pretty nice quality cigar. So, I'll enjoy this. Hope you all have a great weekend. And uh, I look forward to talking to you on Sunday. So, take care, everybody.